Hi, my name is Mike Kaler and I'm the Customer Service Manager for CE Labs. I'm going to be your instructor for the next few lessons covering QuickSign Pro Designer and how, to, how it operates with the MP70 and MP700 digital signage media players. In today's lesson, we're going to discuss program requirements, installation, and initial setup of QuickSign Pro Designer and our digital signage media players. In future lessons, we'll discuss different functions of QuickSign Pro Designer, such as the basic operations, file browser, the scheduler, and we'll delve deep into using the designer to build your own custom layouts. Okay, so let's get started. We've connected our shiny new media player up to our monitor or television. We've plugged in the network cable, and we've plugged the power supply into the wall. Now what? Well, the next step would be to download QuickSign Pro Designer and install it on our computer that we want to use to control our media players. Its requirements are Windows Vista 7 or 8, it must have .NET Framework 4.0 loaded. The PC needs to be on the same network as the player and the same subnet. If you need to control players across multiple subnets or if you need to control the players in multiple locations, then please take a look at our CCM Enterprise product. Okay, the first thing we need to do is open our browser and navigate to www.celabs.net. Once there, you'll see the, our opening portal with our two websites, ProAV Systems and Digital Signage Solution. Click on the Digital Signage Solution on the right-hand side of the screen. And once that website opens up, you'll want to go to the Resources tab. Then underneath the Resources is Downloads. And to the right of that is QuickSign Pro Designer. Go ahead and click QuickSign Pro Designer and save that file to your hard drive. Once you've downloaded QuickSign Pro Designer and you started the installation process, you'll see that it installs two other pieces of software, FFmpeg and mPlayer. Both are required for QuickSign Pro Designer to run and function properly. Once the uh, installation is complete and you run the software, you'll notice that it goes out and checks to see if it's the current version. If it's not, it'll pop open a box and allow you to download the new version, then just install it just as you did the, the original version. Once that's done, run the software again, allow it to go out and it'll discover all your players. It'll populate the fields with your players, so you don't have to know any IP addresses or anything like that. You can see the players over on the left hand side of the screen and you can see that these current players are playing video. You can right click on the player Go to edit and you can change the name of the player. Like for instance, I could say this is uh, Mike's player, for instance, and then click OK. Um, you can go under view and sort these players any way you would like. After you've found your players and you've got your software installed, we need to do a couple of things to the players to get them ready for usage. Under tools, you will see set player time. This sets the real-time clock on the player. If you'll click on that, ensure that your player is in the player list that you want to check, and you can read the, the current time on the player. You can also set that time. You can use a predefined time that you select here, or you can just simply use the time that's on your computer. You hit set player time, it'll go out, it'll set it, and it'll say successful. Once that happens, you can say exit. The other thing you want to do is go under Tools and Set Video Output. You want to make sure that the video output matches your television set. Generally this should be set to 1080p60 and apply your video. As well, on the browser output resolution, generally you'll want that set at 1920 by 1080 and apply that video resolution as well. Once this happens, the player will reboot, so be prepared. With that in mind, once that is done, you'll want to go over to your Maintenance tab. We'll go to Update Player Application Manager, and it will and start. It will go out and check to see if it needs an update, and then you can start the update. Um, the other thing you'll want to do is do the player firmware, and once again, it's done the same way. Once the X app Application Manager and the firmware have been updated, the player will reboot and at that point the player is ready for operation. 
And that concludes this lesson. Thank you for using CE Labs for your digital signage needs. Look forward to more videos in this series as we delve deeper into QuickSign Pro Designer. And as always, if you have any questions or concerns, please contact our customer service department at 800-767-6189. Thank you.